All right, guys, um, this could very well be our last video in uh, the series of our tuning um, of an SQ car. Um, we covered a lot of stuff. Um, like I said, I'll be doing more videos afterwards. Uh, if you guys want anything specific, um, feel free to post up. But um, this was my list. We kind of went ahead and did everything. Uh, technically, we're down uh, to right about here. Uh, EQ each pair of drivers for... Uh, um, level and center it's kind of all in one uh, i'll show you guys how to do that uh crossover slopes gaps we kind of already talked about that uh like i said though um in that 300 hertz area in my car uh it's going to be a little touchy so i will um, keep an ear out so if that seems like it is uh, higher than it should be uh in level spl output whatever you want to call it um, we'll go ahead and either knock it down with one of the two drivers and I'll show you guys how to do that um, deciding which one is which or just go ahead and widen up the uh, crossover gap um, we'll have to see uh, EQ the system without sub and with sub um, really if you guys have been doing everything up to here um, that's really not necessary we'll kind of do it all with it we'll just go ahead and skip to that last part uh, but EQ each pair for center and level. <clears throat> um, when I talk about center, uh, see, so here's my car. I want my center to be right there. And when you do it, a lot of people have different ways of tuning for center. Um, some will say that like this right here is the center of the vehicle. You know, from the mirror down to uh, the mirror down to the shifter. Um, so they want this to be their center. Well, you can do that, but if you do, um, if you do tune your car properly, your stage should be much farther back. Um, and so, if your stage is say at the windshield wipers from where the vehicle headrest is then your center is going to all be all the way over here instead of right here where the center of the car is. So um, keep that in mind. The center should technically be um, wherever the stage is depth wise, it should be on the center of the vehicle. So if you have a really deep stage and it's out on your hood, the center of the stage should be on the center of your hood. Um, which to some people will throw them off because they're not used to having such a deep stage that they're used to judging it on the dash. So they'll say, oh, well, your stage is right here, which is off to the left. Well, no, it's really not off to the left because the stage is actually out on the hood and out on the hood from the driver's seat because you're going at an angle down the car. It's actually on the center of the hood. So... Um, keep that in mind if you're not competing obviously it's personal preference so that's up to you guys um but just something to keep note of and if you are competing depends on who's judging um how well they understand all that kind of stuff um and just because they're judging i'm a judge too i was uh, judge of the year last year year before something like that um doesn't mean they know everything it really doesn't um they may have a better understanding of stuff, but uh, even then it's all subjective and better than who? Because there's always someone better than you are. So always be learning. Um, I definitely don't know everything. I read uh, a lot of stuff from reliable sources on the internet. I read a lot of uh, technical books. My wife makes fun of me because they're pretty much textbooks. Um, but I think it's cool. I think it's interesting and I love to learn and um, definitely passionate about sound. So um, it's what I do. So anyway, um, we're gonna talk about using 31 band uh, filtered pink noise, 30 band, 31 band, whatever you have. Um, if you don't have anything, I'm looking at possibly putting this up here for download and um, maybe taking donations or something. It costs me money. Um, the 31 band pink noise that most people have that's out there, um, I put into uh, Audacity and uh, Adobe Audition, and it really wasn't, 
really wasn't what it should have been. Um, pink noise is mathematically generated to... Um, see if I have Rue pulled up here. And I don't. Anyway, it's mathematically generated, so when you... It rolls off from... Um, Let's see if we can just get... Hold on. All right, so I don't have uh, any internet out here next to the garage. Um, it's a uh, rock house, so it really kind of blocks all signals, Wi-Fi, cellular. Anyway, um, here's the RTA graph that we saw yesterday in my car. Um, basically pink noise <clears throat> is supposed to start up here at 20 Hertz, uh, 15, 10, whatever it's calculated to do. Um, and it rolls off, uh, it's like three decibels per octave. So every octave, it drops down three decibels. Um, and it should be fairly, uh, you know, fairly linear across there. The problem is... Whoever wrote the algorithm, because that's all it is, an algorithm, for the pink noise really didn't take into account what we're doing here. Um, and when you look at pink noise, um, like I said, it's randomly generated. So every, uh, even in Adobe Audition, which is a really nice, really expensive program, it has a pink noise generator. Every time I generated pink noise and looked at the uh, spectrum of the RTA graph on it of what it was outputting, um, not of what was in the car, but was, you know, in the actual physical programming of the um, sound, not really music, um, it was different every single time. So that's why when I was saying before um, to go ahead and... Uh, <clears throat> use the same pink noise every time you guys tune. Um, that being said, like I said, the 31 band pink noise that's out there, um, the problem was um, even for regular pink noise, and I still haven't found a solution for full 20 to 20 pink noise, uh, 20 hertz to 20k pink noise, but um, say at... Uh, 100 hertz, it was at negative 10 decibels. At 200 hertz, it was at negative 13 decibels, which means it was going down 3 decibels per octave. Well, that's all well and good, but at 125, at 125 hertz, where it should be negative 11 decibels, it, uh, it could have been at like negative 12. And then at 160 hertz, it should have been at negative 12, and it was actually at like negative 10. So it actually started here, went down, and then jumped back up, and then went back down um, in that octave. Now, whoever wrote that programming, I'm not bagging on him. Um, I'm guessing it's probably one guy, and they just used it um, for everything. Uh, it could be multiple times. could be someone programming it for each program. I don't know. Not bagging on him. Um, obviously, I'm not capable of it, but... Uh, for what we're doing here, it really just didn't work. Um, so I took the 31 band pink noise and uh, sent it off to a um, an engineer and um, that was at a studio and actually paid them to um, make sure that all the frequencies were what they should have been. Now when I say that, there was... Uh, some noises uh, or some uh, tones, um, pink noise filtered, say it was centered at 200 hertz. It may not have actually been at 200 hertz. It could have been at like 220 or 180, um, which isn't a huge deal. But, I mean, when you're trying to center up frequencies, um, obviously that matters. And they were not all at the same output volume level. Um they should have been, but they weren't. Um, and that, again, that's just from whoever did it. Um, when they applied the filters to each side, um, it kind of, the way it does it is um, because you have high frequencies and low frequencies and everything else, um, it just didn't center it up perfect. And um, 
again, not bagging on the dude, just, you know, what I found in my, my testing and results. Um, but so anyway, I paid somebody to go out there and take those 31 men pink noise, make sure they're all, uh, perfectly centered on the frequency that they should have been as well as, um, they took down a lot of the background noise that was there, uh, basically took the levels down much farther. Um, and also, uh, they are, um, all at the exact same output level, like plus or minus within 0 0.01 decibels. So way lower than you're going to hear. Um, but some of the ones that I had on the original 31 band pink noise were, um, some of them as much as like seven or eight decibels off. I mean, that's huge, huge. And I don't know how you can tune by that. Um, I mean, I did for a year and a half or something like that. And, um, it was kind of working, but at the same time, it just wasn't as accurate as it nearly should have been. Um, so anyway, where are we at? We're already at 11 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, so I got a sneeze. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close this video out. Uh, I guess we'll put this at number 12 or something like that, whatever we're at. Um, and then do number 11 and, uh, I guess it really doesn't matter because you guys aren't, uh, matters what up order I upload this in. Anyway, um, anyway, any questions or comments, um, if you guys want a copy of that CD, um, for me to upload it, um, I'll do that. And also what I did is, um, the filter pink noise that was out there was like, uh, each one was like 15 or 20 seconds long for the, uh, the noise itself, whatever band frequency it was at. But then you had to wait for the track to end. Um, and then in the beginning of the next track, there would be an announcer to say what frequency that was centered at. And then a pause. Um, and then the next tone. So uh, your brain, like half a second, and it's already f starting to forget the noise that was previous to it. So what I did is I took three or four... Uh, three or four frequencies and um, put them back to back like on this one you have uh, uh, 100 hertz 125 160 and 200 and they're only six seconds a piece and they literally roll from one to the next to the next to the next to the next um, so that way you get a much better understanding of um, not necessarily understanding but you get a lot better reference for what volume the tone is at when you roll to the next one. Um, plus you can roll through like every three or four tones just changing tracks and make sure that each section um, is where it should be. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, go ahead and start uh, actually what this video was supposed to be. But um, subscribe, like the video, it helps me out and um, helps other people find the videos so other people can do... Um, you know, maybe sound quality is not this big scary thing that uh, some people think it is. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, put them up in the comment section, and I will be sure to uh, to get those going and uh, keep on top of that and get you guys' questions answered. If you have any um, requests for future videos, be sure to put it out there, and I will uh, um, do what I can to answer your guys' questions. Peace.